how good an airline can be. By Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Everything else is just a lunch. By the Elanco Products Company, who bring you Treflan and Sonalan for economical and dependable full-season weed control in soybeans. It is a warm Saturday afternoon in Bloomington, Indiana. Welcome to Assembly Hall, where the Purdue Boilermakers, number two in the nation, go against the team that won the championship last year in Indiana. Only Arizona, which plays Illinois later today, is ahead of Purdue in the national rankings. Another Big Ten team rated number nine is Michigan. But the subject here today is Purdue as well as Indiana. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson. Here is Purdue with the longest winning streak in the nation among the top teams, Quinn Buckner, 16. Here's Purdue, number two in the nation, undefeated defeated the Big Ten, but here's Purdue playing at Indiana. Well, you're right, and when you're here in this game, anybody who's ever followed this game emotionally or physically has to know that you throw out all records, all past history, doesn't really help you here. It's going to be an emotional game, and one I think is going to be really exciting. Gene Cady looking for a national championship. Bobby Knight's got three, including the defending championship. But at Ohio State, he surprised us and the Buckeyes with a brand new starting lineup, including two freshmen. Well, absolutely. The two freshmen, I think, are going to have a big impact on this game. They've never played in anything like that. Lyndon Jones is a very good player. He's a leader, as well as Jay Edwards is a good shooter. But again, they haven't played in this kind of environment. Lyndon Jones, 9 out of 10 from the floor as a freshman starter against Ohio State. Bobby Knight to start the same kind of lineup today against this powerful Boilermaker team? Well, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to go with the same lineup. I know they're going to have some mismatches uh, defensively, so they got to work to combat that. All right, we'll come back in a moment, and Quinn will have for you his keys to this afternoon's game. What it'll take for the Boilermakers, what it'll take for Indiana to win. Here in game brought to you by Ford, here's Quinn. Well, I think it's going to be really important today for Purdue. The rebound is going to be critical. I think they have some mismatches there that they got to get, take advantage and get the rebound. Inside game, particularly Todd Mitchell is going to probably have Joe Hillman or somebody like that, so they have to take advantage of that. Indiana needs to get off to a good start, take advantage of what they uh, started in, uh, at Ohio State, and I think the play of Dean Garrett is going to be very critical. I think he's got to block some shots, and he's got to get some rebound baskets for Indiana. Oh, buddies, before the game, the keys have been brought to you by the Ford Motor Company. Have you driven a Ford lately? And we'll come back in a moment. Bobby Knight's Hoosiers against the Boilermakers of Gene Cady. But first, this pause for these local messages. And for Indiana at forward, a 6'10 senior from Bogota, Colombia, number 14, Magnus Kompowski. The center for the Boilermakers, a 6'9 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 35, Melvin McCants. In the middle for Indiana, he's a 6'10 senior from San Clemente, California, number 22, Dean Garrett. At front guard for the Boilers, a 6'2 senior from Evanston, Illinois, number 21, Everett Stevens. And for Indiana at guard, a 6'1 freshman from Marion, Indiana, number four, Lyndon Jones. The other starting guard for the Boilermakers, a 6'4 senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 23, Toy Lewis. Rounding out Indiana's starting lineup, at guard, a 6'2 senior from Glendale, California, number 44, Joe Holman. Gene Cady in his eighth year, Purdue, looking for a national championship. This could be his year. And Bobby Knight, his team have won three, including last year's tournament championship. The game, 17-1. Purdue, 6-0 in the conference. A big game. And we'll be back for the game after this word from the Big Ten. Bucker. And Licklider and Jerry Souter are his assistants. There's Bobby Knight at home. This is where he must win to have any semblance to stand the Big Ten race. And of course, shooting for postseason birth. Indiana in white, red numerals, and Purdue in black. 16 straight, the longest winning streak in Division I basketball. The Boilermakers lead overall by 30 games. Last year, they traded 11-point wins. Each team winning at home. Todd Mitchell, the jump against Dean Garrett. 
17,000 are here. Ball knocked away by Edwards, composed it for Indiana. Right out of the hands of Troy Lewis. This is Lyndon Jones. Well, the Purdue's come out in their typical man-to-man, -man, and they're going to try to exert a lot of defensive pressure on Indiana, as I said, because they have some young players who haven't played in this type of environment before. Indiana showing the same patience they showed at Ohio State. Hillman was an early score there with nine points. Garrett takes it down. And we got a foul on Magnus Pelkowski after the basket here also, but that's going to help Indiana a lot that Dean gets off to this good start because they did... Yeah, as you can hear, the, the fans are getting into the game. Yet to be seen what else happens. Now for Purdue. Indiana started the same starting lineup and started at Ohio State. First time that lineup. Purdue goes with it the same. Jones, Mitchell, McCants, Stevens, and Lewis. The regulars that have taken them to 17 and 1. Jones is about to score, but Lewis is. Off the back. Great and that is tip dunked by, by Kip Jones. Jones. Kip Jones just made a great play right there. What, one of the Indiana players didn't block him out. The, Indiana's got to set up where the two guards are staying on top, and they got to be conscientious of Kip Jones going after the rebound. Scores tied at two, and Stevens, no call of a foul there. They wanted Kalkowski. He can hit from there, but does not. All goes over to Purdue. You wanted a fast start. It's 2-2, two -two, but we got a fast start. Oh, we definitely got off to a fast start. Magnus Pelkowski took a shot that I think the Indiana coach is going to be very pleased with. That's a shot that Magnus can make and Indiana can, can deal live with, actually. And several of those at Ohio State from that same spot, right baseline. This is Stevens driving on Jones. Here's Kip Jones again. This time, Pelkowski with the rebound. Hillman got a one on four. They'll have to wait. Makes a good decision, slows it down, and brings the ball back out. Hey, Edwards. No sign of the cramps that he had against Ohio State. Well, they join. Garrett takes the shot. Misses badly. Garrett's got the rebound, and that was good. And we talked about Dean Garrett early. He was going to have to have a good game, and I think he's getting off to a very good start for Indiana. Purdue has got to block him off the board. Todd Mitchell, foul called against Garrett. He was moving as Mitchell moved into him, and that, of course, is blocking. Well, I thought that was a very good call. Todd Mitchell is a player that I think is going to give uh, Indiana a lot of problems. You see he spins right there and goes up, and there's, there's contact, and generally in that situation, the offensive player is going to get the benefit of the doubt. That was a good call. In Big Ten play, Purdue has averaged nearly 14 points a game more than their opponents from the foul line. Indiana about one point again more than their opponents from the foul line and we all recall that against Ohio State Wednesday night Indiana went 18 for 18. That's what we're talking about on your screen right there. That free throw differential uh, that Purdue has is extraordinarily high and I think it has really helped them win a lot of basketball games. They've been out rebounded most of the time but they're obviously playing very aggressive offensively. Look at this pressure down court almost got away with it but they got the ball into Garrett and here comes Lyndon Jones. Uh, Everett is going to give Jones all the pressure he wants. Garrett misses. Hillman tips it in. Great tip by Joe Hillman. <laughs> Whistle underneath. And is that on Pelkowski again? Yes, it is. That'll be Magnus. two. Remember, he had to take a seat in the second half against Ohio State and later fouled out. Two fouls already on Magnus. And you see Joe Hillman coming and following the ball. Dean Garrett takes the shot, and Joe gets a great tip right there. And, and Purdue has got to be aware of Joe Hillman. He likes to play inside. Out jump McCants, who's seven inches taller. Sometimes those little guys will sneak in on you. 6-4, <laughs> uh, Indiana. Two and a half minutes have gone by. Stevens is walking with the ball as he steps around the Indiana defender. On that particular play, Everett got ready to go up for the shot, and Dean Garrett went up after him, and I think he got caught by surprise. Edwards and Jones, same basketball team in Marion, state champions, both co-Mr. Basketballs of Indiana last year. Here they are playing varsity ball. Purdue, conversely, is an experienced team. Very experienced team, and I think that's really going to be to their benefit in this game. You know, they've had players who played in this situation. Jones takes the shot. He's still hot. Nine from ten against Ohio State. One for one now. Eight for Indiana. 
That was a big league shot by the freshman there. He took the ball into traffic and was able to get it into the basket. Stevens into the camp for a fall away. No good. Garrett with the rebound. This is what Quinn said Indiana wanted. A fast lead, get the crowd in the game. They got them. They got them. They get a lot of good play from them. A lot of different. Exactly. Dean Garrett made a tough shot right in there. The dude's got to do a better job of keeping Dean Garrett out of the paint. And four. Lewis, he can hit a three-pointer, but that's no good. He just again. Battle on the board, and possession goes this way, winning to Purdue. Boy, I'd love to play in the Big Ten. You see guys going down on the floor to get the basketball. And as you see right there, Dean Katie's giving the team some instruction. By the way, from where Quinn and I are seated, we cannot see the possession arrow. It's on our side, so we'll have to wait moments. Suffice to say, next jump ball that will belong to Indiana. Mitchell from the side, missing badly. Belongs to Indiana. In order for Indiana to be successful in this basketball game, they got to come up with all of those loose balls that, that get away because Purdue has such superior inside strength. Indiana may not be able to rebound with them, but all the long rebounds they have to get come up with. Now, if we look high in the ceiling here, the scoreboard at Assembly Hall does have possession on it. The one in the middle of the court up high. Purdue, so keep up. I'm sorry, Purdue has now gone into that matchup. Oh. Roman gets another rebound off to Andrew Perkowski as Edwards missed the shot. I think Indiana got away with one there. I thought Magnus Velkowski was on the Purdue player's back. That would have been his third. Velkowski from that side. Yeah. yeah. We talked about it. Magnus can shoot that shot. And Purdue is going to have to make some adjustments and get one of his big players either tied or playing on that zone and get out there and try to guard Magnus. Eight-point lead for Indiana in the early going. Steven. No. The Purdue is missing. And Garrett gets the rebound. The crowd is wild. They're on their feet. Again, you see Purdue is still in that matchup zone, which I think is probably going to be to their advantage. They're going to try to make Indiana shoot jump shots to beat him as opposed to getting the ball inside the Garrett as Indiana had to do. Hillman, yeah! And now Indiana's not only shooting jump shots, they're making those jump shots. Dean Katie has called a timeout to try to figure out how to stop Dean Garrett, Indiana Hoosiers, and now leading 14 to 4. A 10 point lead. Indiana got off to the fast start, but that's a veteran team that's won 16 in a row, and we've got a long way to go. But at the moment, it's Indiana by 10. Obviously upset at the officials for a call or perhaps a lack of a call. Yeah, he, Kalkowski at the other end of the court. Yeah, he definitely was upset about that because Magnus is here and made a jump shot. He's, he's having an impact on this game, so he's trying to get the officials' attention. 14 to 4, 14 minutes, 41 seconds to go. First half, Purdue's got the ball. There's Jones taking the shot. No good. And the two Purdue men battle for it, but it goes off the hands of Lyndon Jones and out of bounds. Well, I think Indiana Purdue. probably got a break there because Purdue had two men on the basketball. Both Scheffler and Mitchell had the ball and had a chance to get a rebound basket. Unfortunately, for Purdue, that he wasn't able to get it in. Scheffler, the big, strong rebounder in for McCants, who's not been doing the job on Garrett. Scheffler is recruited as a football player by Michigan, and he is tough and rugged under the boards. He sure is. They recruited him as a tight end. They had very, like, one of the top tight ends they recruited that year. Steven, oh, he was hot against Louisville and they're pushing off against Purdue underneath. It'll be on Scheffler. That particular play, I, if, if I'm Coach Dean Katie, I'm not going to be very upset about the shot that uh, Steven shot right there. He did the right thing, threw it in to Kip Jones, Kip did it, threw it right back out. Steven just missed the shot. Everett could not miss in the first half against Louisville, but has not hit yet. Today. I think he's going to be an integral part in, in what they're trying to accomplish today. Coach Katie seems to think when he plays well, they have a better chance of winning. Good recovery there by Jones. With Stevens right on it. To do is back in a man-to-man. Uh -oh, -man. He walked. He walked. They're putting it on so much pressure. They got Indiana way out of sync offensively, and, and Purdue has done a very good job defensively. Still Indiana by 10, 13.52 to go. First half. 
Purdue is a veteran ball club. It's important that they come down and be patient and not try to get all the points back on one shot. They're down 10, but it's early in the game. Tesla puts it up and in. He's not known as a scorer, but he was very aggressive there. Tony Jones getting ready to come in for the tournament. You can only wonder how long Indiana can put up with this defensive pressure of Purdue, which I think is very good. Boy, well, I was going to say that is really taking the shot that you wonder whether or not it's advisable, but it goes swish, and it is. I agree with you. I, it was an ill-advised shot. It's one of those things that Coach says, no, no, good shot. Walking on Mitchell as he tried to get inside of Garrett. Always a pressure game. We'll remind you these two teams traded 11-point victories. Each team winning at home a year ago. Gene Cady has just put in Tony Jones and he's taken out Kip Jones. And what he's doing is matching up with the three guards Indiana's playing with the additional guard that Purdue has. Tony Jones is a very good athlete and will help increase the defensive pressure. Kalkowski, yeah! Three pointer. That is a great shot by Magnus Belkowski. That's a 6'11 man out there shooting three pointers. And that sometimes catches teams off guard. And I think Purdue has been put off guard by. 19 to 6 and a foul is called and that is Kalkowski on the floor and that is personal foul number three against Magnus Kalkowski. I would suspect Todd Jadlow will be getting up shortly. Well you see here on uh, the pick Magnus gets out but what he does is he sticks his leg out. He, there was really no chance to stop Troy Lewis. Troy's a very good player just kept going and got Magnus to get caught. Sorry call a foul. He calls for a foul. Jadlow comes in 19 to 6 the score. McCants is getting ready to come back in and they will take out Mitchell. So it is McCants, Tony Jones, Everett Stevens, Troy Lewis, and Scheffler. The only change for Indiana. Ball knocked away to White to Stevens. Good pass. That's a very good pass by Everett Stevens. Melvin McCants came up with a loose ball, threw it right to Stevens. Stevens went in like he's going to shoot it, made a great bounce pass, and then got a foul. Well, it is against Jadlow, and Bobby Knight seeing the same kind of thing he saw against Ohio State. Bukowski quickly in foul trouble. Jadlow replaced him. He got in foul trouble. McCants is a 67% free throw shooter and does not have a point yet. Matter of fact, Scheffler and Jones have the only baskets. Mitchell has added two free throws. No, 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 no. 13 point lead. As we talked about at the top of the program, records and scores in these games don't seem to matter. Indiana's gotten off to what is a very good lead right now. Steve Shepard so. got called for being over the back of Dean Garrett. And that's his second. He has picked up the only fouls for Purdue, while Kalkowski has three, Garrett one, and Jadlow one for Indiana. <laughs> Jones, Stevens on him. That was a nice move there. Oh, that was a big league move by that young man. Purdue did a great defensive job. That was a good, good individual effort by young Jay Edwards. 15 point lead over the second rank. Purdue, Wallemaker, Scheffler, yes. And Steve is showing aggressiveness and the will to score. He only averages six points a game. He's doing a very good job of getting position. Indiana's got to be concerned that anybody gets that kind of position on the block. And that's going to probably get Dean uh, Garrett in foul trouble somewhere down the road. Jones, 2.5, no. Gadlow loses the ball to Scheffler, and here comes Purdue. Oh, that's a charge, and he does not get the basket. That's his first foul. I'll tell you, I think it's very important that it, that Purdue doesn't get rattled here. I mean, they're, they're a veteran team, but I'm looking and seeing some uh, looks on faces where they've never been in this kind of position before. This plan here is the tough thing to do. They've only lost one. That was to Iowa State, and they were blown out on that one. First half, 21-8, Indiana, back after these local messages. The Olympics, Japan, name it, he played there. And when you walk in, it's like walking with Michael Jackson. <laughs> at least here at Assembly Hall. And I can see all the Purdue people saying, why do you have Quinn Buckner, an Indiana man, on a Purdue telecast? Because he works them all, folks. Gene Cady's team down by 13, 11.45 to go in the first half. Indiana wanted to get off to the fast start. They have done that. 
But remember, in our first telecast of the year, they did that against Iowa. Had Iowa on the ropes at Iowa. Well, that may be the key. They're at Iowa, away from home. But they lost big in the second half. Well, but that was a different lineup. One of the reasons that Indiana is up right now is Purdue is having a very difficult time getting any outside shot. As you see Tony Jones steal the ball and take it to the basket right there. Tony Jones, good defense, and defense set that up, but he's been improving as an offensive player. 11-point lead, the alley-oop, but Garrett's out of position, but he puts it up, and Scheffler comes down with a rebound. And that was good defense by Purdue. They got help from the weak side and had Dean Garrett take a very difficult shot. He was not able to make it. Purdue has scored the last four points, making, looking now to make it six or seven in a row and get themselves back on track. There's McCants, and he's got it. Well, we talked again earlier about the inside play of the ball makers, and I think they're doing an extremely good job getting the ball inside to their scores, and the scores are getting the ball down in the basket. A six straight point spurt by Purdue, and that has ended on the drive by Jones. 23 12. Mitchell. Oh, there's a tip away by Jay Edwards to steal for the young freshman. What a move! Great a move second great Jay. move. Oh, he really is. He's making some moves you don't see a lot of seniors making. And he's making it without a lot of effort, which I think is indicative of what kind of score this kid can be. Looked like a ballet dancer, the pirouettes. He did. Scheffler. He's been rugged from there, but misses that one. And somebody may have gone over the back. Let's see who it is. If it's Garrett. They call it on nope. Todd Mitchell, I believe. They did. 33. You're right. That's his first. You see right here, Jay Edwards just going to the basket. Left-handed takes a spin, moves the ball away from the defense, and a very, very good move right there. Kip Jones coming back in. Burning is in. Scheffler goes out. So for Purdue, Troy Lewis, Ryan Burning, Scheffler, Jones, and McCants. Well, Purdue has gone back to their big lineup. They want to try to be a little more aggressive, make some things happen on the inside. Remember, Indiana has made the one substitution, and that was because of Jadlo. Jadlo came in for Kalkowski because Kalkowski had three personal fouls. That was points for Jadlo. That play was made pretty much by Dean Garrett, who got the ball, looked, found the open man, and then Todd Jadlow Jad happened to be that man and knocked the shot down. Second time, Indiana's had the 15-point lead. Nearly 30 minutes of basketball left, Howard. As Lewis, he's not hit yet and does not hit there. There's some jumping there, but losing the ball away. And it off the hands of Jadlow still belongs to Purdue. That play was made by Melvin McCants, who did, I thought, an outstanding job of keeping the ball alive. One of the Indiana players knocked it out and produced ball. Feed into McCants. Garrett's there. McCants puts it up. Oh, they called it for an offensive oh, foul. My heaven. I thought Garrett thought it was against him. He kept his hands high, but they said no. Well, I really thought that was going to be a foul. Right here, you see McCants has great position. Dean Garrett is right there. Does a fake. Well, he does go in and make the contact. The call is determined as who initiates the contact. In that particular instant, it looked at McCann. Melvin McCants did initiate the contact. To Garrett takes the shot. And, and the question is, who did it? Because McCants is in the area. I think Melvin McCants probably got called for that foul. If so, it is his third. That's it. Three fouls from McCants, two in less than a half a minute. Well, you see right there, Coach Katie with his jacket off. And one of the reasons is that way, obviously, is Melvin McCants has gotten that particular foul. He mentioned to me earlier that he was really concerned if one of the big players got in foul, either Dean Garrett or Melvin McCants. Right now, Melvin McCants is in foul, and Steve Sheffield in foul trouble. Steve Sheffield is coming in for him. I remember as Garrett stepped to the line by hitting 10 for 10 against Ohio State on Wednesday night. He has raised his field goal shooting percentage to 71, or I should say free throw shooting percentage to 71. He'll get two shots. Well, that's 11 for 11, and we've seen him. Indiana has been concerned about its shooting, shooting less than 50%. They went uh, slightly over 50% against Ohio State and won. They're shooting nearly 70% now, 68-plus percent. That's eight points for Dean Garrett. 
And that's a 17 point lead. Who would have thought it? Do looking for the answer. Some kind of rhythm. Yeah, they really are. I, just, I don't think anybody thought that Indiana would get up to this kind of lead. Burning can hit from there. Three point try, no good. Jadlo grabs it away from Scheffler, who's operating himself with two personal fouls. But Purdue is really having a very difficult time getting any shots in from outside, and Indiana's coming up with a lot of good rebounds. Oh, great spot for Garrett. He now has 10 points. And it's a 19 point lead against the number two team in the nation, Purdue, which is undefeated in the Big Ten. 8.20 to go. They'll have to show some patience to get back in this one, but there is plenty of time. Look at Katie. He is screaming. 31 to 12, Indiana. The cast selected by Rasmussen Communications Management, approved by the Big Ten Conference. Look at Purdue. 5 of 16, Quinn just seemed to have no rhythm at all in attacking the basket. Well, they really haven't, and most of that, those misses have come from the outside. Indiana's been able to keep Purdue shooting out there, and, and Purdue is just not having the kind of success that they need to win this basketball game. Scheffler, burning. Troy Lewis, their big scorer, no points yet. Stevens, no points yet. They may be the best two guards in the country. There's a steal again by Indiana. The feed to Edwards by Hillman, followed by Garrett. No good. Those are the kind of baskets that Indiana is going to have to have to win this basketball game. I thought Purdue did a great job of getting back, but in that situation, it's hard to block people out, and you saw Indiana got the basket on the rebound. Three-pointer for Stevens. They answer. Well, that'll quiet a, cry, uh, that'll quiet a crowd down in a hurry, a three-pointer. Was a 21-point lead before that three-pointer. Incredible. We thought this ball game, and it may yet turn out to be. A one or two pointer, either way. Maybe overtime and may yet turn out that way. But Indiana at the moment is really on a roll. Two freshmen in there running an offense, playing tenacious defense, having the steals of the ball, all of the things that Purdue normally does. Katie is going mad on the sideline. Well, he thought that there possibly should have been a, a, a traveling call there on Joe Hillman as you see the steal by Kip Jones. There's a big man. He's got the ball now, Lewis. And from outside, another three-pointer by Stevens. Well, that's what you see an experienced player do. Uh, he knows that they need to get some outside shooting going. He's one of the players that Coach Katie, as I mentioned earlier, knows that has to play well. Now he's made two three-pointers, and I think that may help. Oh, look at this. Shot. Nobody blocking on roll, and Garrett with another basket. Over, going burning. He is fouled by Edwards. That was a great pass by Everett Stevens to get the ball down there. The Indiana did a poor job of getting back. Jay Edwards did the only thing he could try to protect against that basket, but he was called for the foul. Right here, you see Burning go up, and it's definitely a foul by Jay Edwards. Katie wanted goaltending as well as the foul. He wanted to get another three-point play. Burning, 63% free throw shooter. Scheffler is coming out. Tony Lewis is coming in, and Keith Smart who only played one minute, 39 seconds against Ohio State, replaces Hillman. Callaway did not play against Ohio State and has not shown yet this afternoon. Smart made a statement quoted that he said, I played myself onto the bench. But here he is back with 6.21 to go in the first half. Ryan Burning. Thirty-five, nineteen. at one time was 33-12. Todd Jadlow. Todd six from the foul line for Indi uh, Purdue. Todd Jadlow has done a good job for Indiana coming off the bench, getting um, two points, a couple of rebounds. As you look right now, Purdue has gone back in into their matchup zone, trying to keep the ball on the outside. Three points by Edwards. For Indiana, if that young man gets into his rhythm, he's going to be extremely difficult. For Purdue to stop, they'll have to put a lot of concentration into that, which may take away from every Stevens three with his third three-pointer. He has kept them fairly close with nine points on his last three shots. Yeah. 
38-22, Indiana. Indiana needs to make sure that they stay patient here, but they have to be concerned about becoming uh, unaggressive. Does that look familiar against Syracuse from where he was there? It, it really did, and that's got to really help his confidence. You know, when you've been set on the bench for doing some things that you don't, you may or may not agree with, to come in and get a good early basket really helps. Mitchell over Great a lot shot. of people, he gets it and he's fouled. Great shot there by Todd Mitchell, and that foul is on Dean Garrett. Good pass right there. See Todd Mitchell get the ball and does a spin right there. And Dean definitely knocks Todd on the arm. That is a great move by Todd Mitchell. Garrett picks up his second personal foul, 40 to 24. 506 to go. Mitchell, who's two for two from the line and four points altogether. And that picture you just saw there of Bob Knight, I'm sure one of the things he's concerned about is there was not enough pressure on the passer out there to be allow that lob pass to get into Todd Mitchell. Indiana simply has to play this way the entire game if they expect to beat Purdue despite the 15 point lead at the moment. Yeah, and Purdue is now out until a four point zone press, and that's a foul on Keith. On Stevens. On Stevens or Keith Smart? Well, it's going to be on Smart. That's on Keith Smart, and that was a good play right there. As I said, Purdue came out and went into their 1 2 2 zone press, put a lot of pressure on Indiana. Uh, Lyndon Jones made an ill-advised pass, and quite honestly, I thought Everett Stevens made a, a better play than Everett Jones. Uh, I'm sorry, Lyndon Jones right there. Remember, 17 points by Stevens against Louisville a week ago today. He's had three straight three-pointers, and add two more here for 11 points in this half. Boy, his offensive play here late is really what's kept Purdue in the basketball game. They haven't been able to get the kind of production that they normally get from Troy Lewis. But he's such a great scorer, you just know it's a matter of time before he explodes. So this is really a big boost for the Purdue to get every Stevens going. From the time of this 33 to 12, Stevens has 11 points. Oh, Garrett's all by himself. And Jones does his wise thing. He almost took the shot and now brings it back out because there's 40 seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, he absolutely did the best thing. Indiana did what you need to do against the press, push the ball up and attack the Dean Garrett, missed the dunk. Three-pointer, Edwards! Our man is hot. And when he's hot, ladies and gentlemen, this kid can play. He's a good basketball player. He gets his shot going. He's very difficult to play against. Good shot. That's got. That's a big boost to get Ryan Burning to come in off the bench to give him some points like that. That's a good play. The good thing about Keith Smart being in the basketball game now, I think it'll help alle alleviate some of the dribbling pressure that's been put on Lyndon Jones. That's a lot of pressure to have on a person. Good rebound by Troy Lewis, who has not scored yet, and he is the leading scorer for Purdue. He has got to get hot. 18 straight games of three-point play. Mitchell, yes, and he's fouled by Garrett. Garrett third. He's, he's seeing a little bit of the experience coming out right now. He's got Todd Lewis bringing the ball down. Todd Mitchell had great position. Dean Garrett did follow him. I'm sorry, it's Troy Lewis. I call him Todd. And you got Dean Garrett in foul trouble, and they're going to bring Steve Isle in for him. Isle, a good defensive player, but he is six inches shorter than the man who just left. And now Hillman is coming back in. Let's see whom they take out. Smart is coming out. So Isle, Smart, the two freshmen, Jones and Edwards and Jadlo. And what you've seen here is the experience of Purdue as they slowly have been nitpicking right back into this basketball game. They're right down now by 12 points. That's eight points for Mitchell. It's an 11-point game. At one time, it was a 21-point game. So Purdue has chopped off 10 points with 3.35 to go. 43, 22, or 32. We'll be back after these local messages. We keep telling you a lot of time left, 43-32. But remember, Indiana was up by 21. 3.35 to go, first half. 
And let's look at Purdue as they come out. Everton Stevens, their fine guards. Jones, Mitchell, and Burning. That's what's happened. That's how they've drawn closer. Purdue has come out and done exactly what I think they have to do. Come out and put the, the full court pressure on, see if Indiana's player can, can handle it. Indiana, on the other hand, has to be patient here, come out, and just try to get a good shot. They don't have to really be concerned about much more than that, and, this, and then things will take care of themselves. Jones, a little pressure on him from Lewis. I think part of Purdue's thinking has got to be to get the score where they're not in double digits if they're down. They want to get down when you're nine or less, ten or less, I'm sorry. Edwards misses that time, and the ball is brought down by Mitchell. Well, now here comes Purdue with a chance to make up a whopping deficit by the time this half is over. Troy Lewis, a three-point try, no good. Gadlow right there as the ball bounds right to him. Indiana's had a, a tough time getting the ball inside, and with the lineup they have now, they don't have any inside players, so they, they got themselves in a tough situation here. What you're saying is they missed Dean Garrett. Oh, absolutely. With those three personal fouls. Edwards. And he is fouled by Burning. For all you high school players, I want to tell you, when you got a player like Jay Edwards, the thing that he did there was take the ball to the basket. If you go through scoring droughts, that's what you do. You try to draw a foul. That was a very good play by the young player there. At halftime, Indiana's Bill Mallory, who took the team to an 8-3 regular season, will get his Big Ten Coach of the Year honors. And, of course, Quinn and I will be looking at what happened in the first half. Here's Edwards, first free throw try. That's 11 of 12 on the season for Jay Edwards. Thirteen point lead, 45-32. Tony Jones getting up, ready to come in for Purdue. Off the hands of Troy Lewis, keeps it in play. Remember, Garrett is not in there for Indiana, but neither is McCants in the post for Purdue. Both men in foul trouble, each with three. Purdue is now back into their man-to-man -man defense, and I'm curious to see if Indiana tries to get inside or still shoots jump shot. Gilman. The aisle is clubbed by Kip Jones. You hear the fans booing that. I thought that was just a good hard foul. Oh, you got sure. a player going up for a basket like that. You don't want to hurt him. That's a good pass there by Joe Hillman on the baseline. And Kip Jones just goes up. And what you would try to do is just make sure the player doesn't get the ball up toward the basket. That's just a good hard foul. Isle is not a good free throw shooter. This is one and one. <laughs> well, that, that was a, a free throw that if he had, he, if he misses one of these free throws from the Purdue perspective, that was a very good play. 43% shooter, and Gadlow is there. Oh, I want to tell you, that will incense Coach Katie to have a player come up with a rebound off a free throw like that. Burning was just out of the play, and he was the man under the basket on the left side. Good block. Oh, Stevens has done a job. Now the feed to Tony LeBron. Is it going to be Jones for the foul? Todd Mitchell. Or Mitchell for the foul. Tom Rucker will tell us that 33 or 4, it is 33. It is Mitchell, his second. And Jones is a 60% free throw shooter. He's got four points thus far. I think what's really important for Lyndon Jones or for Indiana with regard to Lyndon Jones. He's done a very good job, I think, of taking care of the basketball, and that's primarily his responsibility, distributing the basketball, not turning it over. No, they don't get it. Jadlow almost knocks it away again, but this time it's brought down by Kip Jones. 140 to go, 46-32. Bernie can hit from there, but does not. Jones follows it off the glass. That's a player that Coach Katie thinks that can bring the team a lot off the bench. He's a very good athlete, played football and ran track in high school. And he's starting to show some signs of the uh, scoring potential that Coach Katie thinks that uh, Tony Jones has. Well, point lead Indiana. All knocked away. Jadlow simply wasn't watching what was going on, and Kip Jones was able to move in and knock it away. 
Jones not expected to score too much and does not, but he's very tough inside. The freshman hit him. Purdue fell asleep on that one, and uh, Todd Gadlow just caught, caught him fall asleep. Got the good pass from Lyndon Jones. 14 point lead. Another three point try. This time, no good. The foul oh, landed on Jones, and that'll be his second. Gene Cady is hands on hips, waving at the officials. You see this, this shot right here, and right on the, this. Right there, you see Kip Jones push Jay Edwards. Mind you, it might have been a little push, but he pushed I, I it. I say you do. <laughs> Here's Jay Edwards. One and one. Two for two from the line. And 12 for 13, make it 13 to 14 in his Indiana career. And it's up to a 15-point lead again. This is clearly not where Purdue wanted to be. Obviously, they would want to be ahead, but now they're, they're running the risk of not being able to be at that nine points uh, that we were talking about earlier. Indiana has led in all but two of its games at the half, even though overall they're 10 and 6. And the Indiana fans are getting to their feet again in the last minute. 50 to 34, 16 point lead. That's not the biggest. It has been 21. It's about a 14 uh, second difference here. And Purdue is going to try to get it down as much as they can to try to get the, their last shot of the half, try to keep Indiana from scoring. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Mitchell, he's taking a rare one from outside and gets a three-pointer. I knew he would shoot that. That's the senior out there, and he knows they need to get some points. So he's going to go ahead and take their chance. Indiana now has 10 seconds to try to get a basket here. That's Mitchell's only his fourth three-point attempt all year. 50 to 37. Hillman takes the shot. Yeah! 15-point lead at the half. Well, this is clearly a position that I don't think anybody thought Indiana would be other than the Indiana player. Purdue right now has to be a bit concerned. Right here, what you're going to see is the ball go through the basket. And that's their three-pointer. Indiana is up 52-37 at the half. This place, Assembly Hall, is going wild, but we have another half to play and a very big halftime coming up, including Bill Mallory, the football coach, after these local messages. Fast start. The fans got in. I thought that helped some of the players get a bit more inspired. I think Purdue did something I, I didn't expect. I thought they got a little bit flustered, but as you see, the veteran club came back and made a run at Indiana. You know, when Garrett went out scoring so well, I figured then Purdue might draw closer because Garrett had just been terrific. Well, you see right there, Dean Garrett it, it takes this jump shot, but what he's able to do is he runs it down. And Melvin McCants got a little bit anxious, started to go back to the other end, and that's a rebound basket by uh, Indiana that really helped him, I think. Both of the big men, McCants and Garrett, in foul trouble with three. So that's something to watch the inside game for both teams. When we come back, the score, well, they're up by 15 points. Indiana trying to upset the number two team in the country, Purdue. We pause for these local messages. 37, and coming up later today, Illinois at Arizona, number one in the country. Purdue playing here is number two. Minnesota at Iowa tonight, Northwestern at Wisconsin. And tomorrow, Michigan plays number 13, Syracuse. Monday, Ohio State at Michigan State. Wednesday night, Quinn and I will be up in Ann Arbor, Iowa at Michigan. Some of you will see Wisconsin against this Purdue ball club. On Thursday, Illinois faces Ohio State, Minnesota at Indiana at Michigan State at Northwestern. But now it's time for the Piedmont stats, and we'll turn it over to Quinn. Well, as you can see right there, Indiana's shooting a, a pretty good percentage, 63 to produce 46 percent. And a lot of Indiana, it, actually, Indiana's pretty well divided. They're both shooting pretty good uh, from the free throw line. Produce 7 for 10, 7, 70 percent. Indiana 7 for 9, 6, 77. The three-point shooting, I think, has really helped Indiana. They're 3 for 5. Purdue is 4 for 11. You know, the outside shooting hadn't been going as evident by that, that percentage. The turnovers. You see, it, Purdue has nine, and they scored six point overs. Indiana has four, but they got 13 points off of Purdue's turnovers. And the outside scoring, as you can see there, Indiana is up to 16, 27 to 11. And I think that's really the difference in the game right now. And it's one that you would not expect because Troy Lewis is so good from outside. Our halftime statistics, some surprises, and they've been brought to you by Piedmont. 
a model of how good an airline can be. The top score in the game, by the way, statistically, Jay Edwards, the freshman with 16. Introducing Piedmont's triple. Dean, Dean Garrett with 14, but he's got three personal fouls. Telkowski with five, but he's got three personal fouls. Gadlow's got four. Hillman with six as he continues to score more than he has in other games. Lyndon Jones with four. Isle with one. For Purdue, the top scores are Todd Mitchell with 11 and Everett Stevens with 11, including an 11-point run that kept Purdue as close as they are. Kip Jones only has two. Mel McCants with three personal fouls only has two. Scheffler four. Tony Jones four. And Ryan Burning three. That's how it shapes up with the score 52-37. And a 15-point lead. And it's about not exactly at the same kind of score. Indiana found itself in front of Iowa at about this time of the game at Iowa. And the key is there they were away from home only to lose big in the second half. Purdue hopes to do that same kind of thing. And remember Purdue with Stevens and Lewis. A lot of people say they're the best pair of guards in the country. The Kansas in foul trouble. But he and Mitchell and Jones can get the job done. Bobby Knott's group which just as of Wednesday night, Quinn, comprised Jay Edwards and Lyndon Johnson, the freshman, Magnus Kokowski, who had hardly played at all, Dean Garrett, they and play, Joe Hillman. Yeah, and then they played a pretty good game there. As you would mention the scoring earlier, I think noticeably absent from that is Troy Lewis, who was 0 for 4. And I think you have to expect it. Given that he averages about 19 points a game, you got to expect he'll come back and play well in the second half. 18 straight games in which in Big Ten plays have three-pointers, and better than 30 games in which he's had three-point plays, and none in the first half of this game. The other streak on the line is Purdue, 16 in a row, longest in Division I play. Indiana on the attack, starting the second half, up by 15. Well, as you can see, Purdue has come out into their man-to-man -man defense. Gets the ball into Garrett. Over McCann, no good, and Mitchell with a big rebound. Well, I tell you, I think and Indiana might have gotten a break on that one because I, I thought, thought Todd, Lowe. Todd Mitchell had the ball, and Jad Lowe hit Todd's arm, so they really got away with a break because that could have been Todd, Todd's foul. Could have been a foul or still could have been Purdue's, Purdue's ball, ball. Yeah. but was neither. Jones, that's the second time he has taken that little stutter step and the second time he's been called for. Well, it, he was undecisive on that shot, and it, the official from the other side of the court made the call, but he had a better position on I. That's what right? Bobby Knight was pointing. He said there was a man right here, and he never called it. McCants over everybody. Well, that's just four points from him. But the, the, the key there is they got the ball inside. That's where Purdue is really effective. And as long as Indiana lets Elvin McCants get the ball down there, he can really score. Garrett's going to shoot. Oh, good. And Jones with the rebound. Interesting enough, Coach Katie has made a decision to come out with his small lineup and try to sweep the game up. And that's four points in a row for Purdue. But then Dan Adams scored in the last minute and 15 seconds. With, with Purdue's experience and the depth of his bench, it's important that they get the tempo up a little bit. And Coach Katie has done just that. He pushed the ball up the court right there, got it inside an easy two points. Garrett's going to try again. This time he gets it. And Dean Garrett now has 16 points. First points of the second half, Indiana, 54-41. Mitchell, left-hander. Four points in this half, 15 altogether. As long as Indiana allows Todd Mitchell to get that basketball in there, he'll score all night. He can shoot with either hand. That particular time, he shot left-handed. That's a very good shot. At 30 points against Minnesota, and in the preseason, some pick Todd Mitchell as an All-American. Steal there. Here comes Tony Jones. What you saw there was Lyndon Jones go to the basket. The pressure's been increased defensively by Purdue, and they come up with a turnover and a basket. They've outscored Indiana 8-2 to two so far in the second half. Garrett shooting from outside. Yeah, he keeps a minute. Well, that's a good shot by Dean Garrett, but the play was made by Joe Hillman, who went to the basket, got Purdue's defense to collapse on him. He kicked it out to Dean Garrett, who shot a nice little 10-footer. 
11 point lead. Stevens and Lewis will bring it up court. Jones, Mitchell, and McCants await. Purdue is four for four in the second half. Ball knocked away by Garrett. Jones tips it up. McCants makes a tough grab for him. Keeps it for the Boilermakers. Belongs to Purdue. Garrett thought it belonged to him. Well, that, Melvin McCants and Dean Garrett are really battling in there. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody comes up with a foul. You'll see Dean come up, touch the ball. It looked to me as McCants knocked the ball out of bounds. On the replay, it appeared that way. But Purdue has the basketball. And Garrett took a shot to the mouth. Big 10. That happened. Lewis, that's his first point. That's a two-pointer. It's a two-pointer, but it's still enough to get him off in terms of his offense. That's something that Purdue badly needs. Nine-point lead, Indiana. They changed that to a three-point goal. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I'll change it. Eight-point lead, Indiana. Scoreboard has changed also. Missed by Garrett, and Jadlow comes down with it. Boy, there are a lot of hands in there around Garrett. And someone drew a foul. Todd Mitchell drew that foul. If so, that'll be his third. And that's right. What you see there in the picture, Coach Bob Knight is trying to tell the official that he thought it was a two-point shot, but the official Rucker said he thought it was a three-point shot, so it's going to be ruled as a three-point shot. Right there, you saw the replay. I didn't see his feet, but he went in. He's got a three-pointer. In the Garrett, fall away jumper, and the Dean Hot, 20 points. Yeah, he's really shooting the ball very well inside. Purdue is going to probably go back to his zone shortly to try to keep him from getting the ball. Mitchell, yes. By the way, our director, Ed Mathias, tells us that they've looked at it in the truck, and it looked as though it was a three-pointer. So it was proper to be changed. Eight-point lead, Indiana. 15.55 to go. Here's Garrett again. The camps over him feeds back out. Three-pointer by Joe. Lyndon Jones. That's a big basket by the freshman, but the play was made by Dean Garrett. He got the ball inside. Purdue justified it. Collapsed two people on him, and he threw the ball out. Mitchell this time the leap. Helped along by Jadlow, who got up there. And here comes Indiana. We are headed for one win of a game, I'm sure, down the stretch. Boy, it sure looks that way. Indiana has to come down and be really patient on their end. I think Purdue needs to come out and be a little more aggressive on the defensive end as you see Everett Stevens try to create a turnover there. Well, he did steal the ball from Jones once earlier. Feed to Garrett by Edwards. No good, and a whistle blows good call. because Jadlow has picked up his second personal foul by pushing off. And that was a good call by the official. It was a 15-point game at the half. Four minutes and 49 seconds have gone by. And Purdue, despite their big push, has only picked up four points. It's 61-50, Indiana. This game, war. <laughs> Indiana from Bloomington, Purdue from West Lafayette. Going head-to-head, -head, they traded 11-point victories last year with each team winning its game by 11 at home. Purdue has the longest winning streak in the nation, 16 in a row among the Division I universities. And, of course, they are 6-0 in the Big Ten and 17-1 overall at number two in the nation. Scheffler will replace McCants for Purdue. Well, that timeout, I thought, really helped Indiana because Dean Garrett shot that shot short because he was really tired. And when he walked off the court after the timeout, I saw him just about pulling his shorts down. Mitchell all the way to the basket. I think Todd Mitchell is really a very good player. He's a good athlete. He did what he needed to do. Came in from behind Indiana's defense. Got the ball in the paint. Made a good move to the basket and scored. He got 19 points, but eight in this half. Feed in for Jadlow, who's able to save it. Now to Jadlow. And that's a move by Jadlow. Very good move by Todd Jadlow, but one of the reasons he made it is because Todd Mitchell doesn't want to get a, get a foul. He backed off a little bit to let Jadlow get in there. Mitchell's hey. got three. Oh. Oh. Jadlow. Foul on Todd Jadlow. If so, that'll be his third. 
What they did is catch Indiana sleeping through the ball right there. And you see Todd Jadlow reached in on Todd Mitchell. Mitchell's got two foul shots. Obviously, Todd Jadlow didn't agree with that call. Mitchell full for four from the line. Mitchell has three personal fouls. McCants has three. For Indiana, Jadlow's got three. Garrett's got three. Tokowski's got three. Indiana, typically not known for his own defense, is playing something a little bit different. They're keeping their two guards up high, letting their big men stay down low. And what Purdue did was take advantage of the situation of it not being man-to-man -man or, or the defensive players being man-oriented, playing zone. Todd Mitchell slipped under, got that, and now he's getting ready to shoot his second foul shot. 20 points for Mitchell, the first time he's missed a free throw after hitting five in a row. 10-point game, 63-53, 14-15 to go. Jones from within, and he's traveling for yet another time. That's his third traveling call against Lyndon Jones. This time was called by the official on the near side. Georgia Tech trying to shock Carolina as Wake Forest did. Carolina lost earlier this year at the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill. That was to do. Lewis. That's, call me. That's on Scheffler, and that will be his third. Steve Scheffler was trying to get, trying to get Troy Lewis open, and Lyndon Jones is trying to follow him, and they, they claim that Scheffler moved his leg out. I'm not sure I agree with the call, but the officials there made it. Here's Hillman. Driving on Lewis. Feeding underneath the Shadlow, and boy, I want to tell you, that could have been a fourth foul there on Scheffler. Well, I thought that was definitely a foul, but you saw Indiana stay aggressive on the backboard. As you see Todd Lewis attempt a three-pointer. Jadlow's got the three-pointer and underneath. And the foul's on Jadlow. Jadlow picks up his fourth, called by Tom Rucker. Well, I think that's really a break for Purdue because the two things that really get people, fans as well as players, emotionally involved is either three-point shot or a stuff. You see the shot is taken right there. Todd Mitchell blocks him out, and from that angle, it didn't look like there was a foul. I think the contact came much earlier when we first saw the replay, if there was contact, because there was no contact at the time the whistle blew. 12-point margin. Indiana Jones, he's not known for it, and does not do it on Jay Edwards. The freshman gets the rebound. Steve Isle is getting ready to come in for Indiana. Katie's going to his bench. I'm sure Steve Isle is going to probably going to come in for Todd Jadlow because Todd has four fouls. And Bernie getting ready to come in for Purdue. Almost a steal there. Steve, no, bad pass by Jones, but Stevens knocks it away to Lewis. Alert play there by Stevens, Good and pass. there's Mitchell. Good pass. Good play by Purdue. Troy Lewis just made a great play right there. That's number two in the nation's play right there. Oh, absolutely. That's a big league play. Purdue is going to try to keep Indiana from going inside. They're going up to their matchup zone. 22 points for Mitchell, 65-55. Growing patience, 17 seconds on the shot clock. There's Jadlow. Can't get it away. Better get going now. They've got five seconds. Hillman to Good Garrett. Pass. Garrett! Good pass. Joe Hillman acted like he was going to the basket, lobbed the ball just a little bit. Dean Garrett came up. Indiana got two points from him. 26 points for Garrett. His season high. And a 12-point lead for Indiana. 11.40 to go. Lewis, yes, and Roy Lewis now has four points after going 0 for 4 in the first half. Well, I mentioned it early. Troy Lewis is going to find ways to get points. If no score likes being shut out, Troy is going to come back and show people that he is the good player that I definitely think he is. If Jones is up in there, Great another hand. steal by Steven. He's done it all today. That's 13 points for Everett Steven. And about his fourth steal. Well, the, the steal was important, but what I think Coach Knight would have to be concerned about, that's an unforced error. 
That's what you call being careless with the basketball, but I think Everett Stevens made a great play. Edwards, three-point try, no good. Gadlow tries to keep it in, but Shepard comes out with it. Here comes Purdue with a chance to get very close. And there's a walk by Tony Jones. Purdue's turned the ball over 11 times. Indiana's turned it over nine times. It's an eight-point game. It was 15 at the half. 10.55 to go in Assembly Hall, Bloomington. 67-59 Indiana. Back after these local messages. 59 Indiana. Indiana led by Garrett at 14 points in the first half. Got 12 in the second half for his season high of 26 points. And on the same kind of track is Todd Mitchell, whose high was 30 points, and he already has 22 points in this game. High was 30 against Minnesota. There's Garrett. I think Indiana, uh, if, you're, if you're coaching the Indiana team, you'd have to be concerned at the way Purdue is making their run back in the game. They're getting their points the way they like to do it, get the tempo up, playing good aggressive defense, and I think they're to be commended for it. Indiana's Jay Edwards also has a season high of 16, but all of those were in the first half, none so far in the first four minutes and five seconds of the second half. Jones, Burning, Stevens, Lewis. Purdue and McCants for Purdue. Oh, there's a bad pass there by Isle. Steven loses the ball away, and Isle says, come on, fellas, but come things out. Well, Coach Katie is up, and I'm not so sure that he's right. I, he may very well be right. There was foul. Some, yeah, there was a foul there. I thought there was contact by Lyndon Jones, and that's what got the ball to come loose. Lead pass to Garrett, who misses, and there's Burning getting the ball away as he falls down. Everett Stevens loose for a three-pointer, and that is his fourth three-pointer of the game, and he now has 16 points, and it's a five-point game. That's the bottom line, 67-62. Well, I thought that play was made again because Purdue pushed the ball up court, took advantage of their easy opportunity. Garrett misses. Kip Jones with a big rebound. Purdue down by 21 in the first half. 15 at the end of the first half. Can draw within two. And there's his three-quarter to keep the streak alive. And I 19, think it's Big Ten, exactly. better than 35. It's time to take a timeout. Troy Lewis made that shot, really got the team into the game. And as I said, the three-pointer and the dunk are the two things that can really get teams involved in a basketball game. You see Purdue is leading. I'm sorry, Purdue is only down two points, 76, 67, I'm sorry, 65. Authorized by the Big Ten Conference and tendered solely for the private use of our viewing audience. And any rebroadcast, reproduction, or the use of the counts and descriptions of the game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference is strictly prohibited. 67 to 65, Indiana. Purdue has outscored the Hoosiers 28 to 15 since halftime. Oklahoma losing to Iowa State 64-62. If you can call that still in the second half, losing down by two. For Purdue, they were down 6-4, and this is the closest they've been since they were down 6-4 early in the first half. Well, Indiana's had a couple of problems, and it started early. When Dean Garrett was making all those shots, Indiana stopped moving the basketball. Gilman, no good. Edwards, no good. Great offensive rebound basket by Dean Garrett. It looked like one of the Purdue players got the ball, knocked out of his hand, and right into Dean Garrett's hand. They've got Jones in the post, and he's going to take it to the basket right through Lyle, and Jones now has four points. That's a good aggressive take to the basket by Kip Jones. 8.50 left to go. What'll be interesting to see here, you have this young team basically with Indiana having two freshmen play. How will they handle the way Purdue has come back? They need to just be patient, move the ball move the ball around so they get a good opportunity and take advantage of it. Purdue, on the other hand, needs to stay aggressive defensively. That's what got them back in this basketball game. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Hillen better get the ball back outside. He does. Seven. Edwards better shoot. He has to. And does not get it. 
But Jones has the rebound and gets it out to Hillman and they set the clock back to 45 seconds. And, and Lyndon Jones made the smart play. He was in there with the trees, as I call them, the big people. There's no way he was going to be able to get that shot off. Mitchell getting ready to come back in for Purdue. And why not? He's got 22 points. Do is in that matchup zone, and it's really causing Indiana to take some second looks and trying to get things started here offensively. Jay Edwards with 16 in the first half hasn't taken a shot that I can recall in the second half. I think he took that three-pointer just a minute ago. There's a shot. You're right. And that's over two for this half. Now Purdue can tie or with a three-pointer go ahead. That's on Dean Garrett. And if it is, that is his fourth. Because it's Garrett or McCants. Either one's going to pick up his fourth. And it's on Garrett. So that's four. Bobby Knight up with his hands on his hips. Garrett has had a super game. He's really played well. But there's been a lot of contact down there on the Purdue's offensive end. I knew it was just a matter of time before one of those guys got called for their fourth foul. This time it was called on Dean Garrett. Seven baskets in this half for Garrett. 28 points altogether. Isle goes out. Kilkowski will come in. Garrett stays in. I think a lot of people would think that there, this is a gamble right now. Dean Garrett has four fouls, and he's still in the basketball game with 7.20 to go. Shot from Lewis. No good. Hillman will pick it up for Indiana. Edwards takes it all the way off the last one. Fouls no good. There's Garrett. And now they're pointing at Jones. And that'll be his third personal foul. Well, Kip Jones did the smart thing right then. He saw Dean Garrett get that offensive rebound. You see Jay Edward go to the basket. And then he gets a hand on the ball, gets it back up. Dean Garrett gets the offensive rebound, has a chance to go up. But prior to that, Kip Jones pushed Dean Garrett in the back. Edwards tosses it in. Jones with three, Mitchell with three, McCants with three, Sheffield with three for Purdue. Garrett with four. Jadlow with four. Kalkowski with three for Indiana. 9.67. 6.50 left to go. Kalkowski, that's his shot over there, but he's covered up quickly by Jones. Get it into Garrett. Garrett shoots over McCants. No good. Mitchell gets the rebound. Kowski very nearly picked up his fourth personal foul. Yeah, he did. He was crashing in for the offensive rebound, and I think Indiana might have got away with it. Got a break on that one. Again, Purdue, number two in the nation, 16 straight wins. Can draw even, or Lewis will try to make it even a does. We got a tie game. Well, that's what the seniors will do for you. They see an opportunity to take advantage of. They did. Now they got it. Purdue is tied with Indiana at 69. Nine points for Lewis all in this half. Tied at 69, six minutes left. This is the kind of game we expected. It really is. Purdue has really gotten back in sync. They were a little thrown off by the new defense, and I think some of the offense that Indiana first started off with. Oh, no good, and Hillman reaches over Jones. Hillman puts it up, no good. Garrett, very strong, but short. The can't come down with it for Purdue. Now, for the first time, Purdue can go ahead. They've not done that. Watermaker's making a lot of believers out of a lot of people. 21 points down in the first half, 15 at the halftime. Here they are with a chance to go ahead. Well, Jim, anytime a team wins 16 in a row the way that Purdue does, you gotta know they know how to play tight games. Right there, you see Melvin McCants do what he does best, get the ball inside, banks it off the backboard for Purdue to go up 71-69. Six points for McCants, four in this half. Now let's see if Indiana panics for those young freshmen. They've not been able to score too much. There's the Garrett working with those fouls. There's Edwards. Yes, and it's a three-pointer. Well, when they take the Indiana takes their time, they get those shot opportunities. They threw the ball inside to Dean Garrett, who's been causing Purdue some problems. Purdue doubled up. There, Dean Garrett threw the ball back out, and you saw the three-pointer by Jay Edwards. 19 points for Edwards. Oh, a hit on the hand by Jay Edwards as McCants went up. That is Edwards' second. 
And Purdue is doing absolutely the right thing. Melvin McCants, first of all, I think is getting very, very good position on Dean Garrett. Dean Garrett having four fouls really can't do anything to stop McCants. You see uh, Todd Mitchell throw the ball inside, and there's very definitely a foul on Jay Edwards. Actually, you could have taken your choice between Jay and Joe Hillman. The Cats had three personal fouls in the first half and not much of a first half. One basket, 0 for 2 from the line. But he's got four points and back at the line now in the second half. You know, and I don't know if the points really indicate his impact in this game. He was out in the first half, but Purdue has still been able to get the ball inside and get good shots. And that's all you really can be concerned about. Some days the ball will go in, some days it won't, it won't go in. Today, he's, old, he's doing pretty well, I think. 0 for 3 from the foul line, McCants. Got one. Mel has a history of not having his best games against Indiana. We've got another tie game at 72. Four and a half minutes left. I think the one thing that this zone has really done to Indiana is caused them not to be aggressive for their shots. Gilman, three points, no good. And there's Jones for the rebound. Out of you to Mitchell. Pass. Yes, good pass. That's a great pass by Kip Jones standing out there at the top of the key to lob that in to Todd Mitchell who made the great catch and the basket. 24 points for Mitchell, 74-72 Purdue. 3.55 left. Edwards, yes, three-quarter, his second in a row. And he now has 22 points. He shot that like a big leaguer. I didn't think that was the shot that you needed to take right then, but he shot it and knocked it right down. Jones comes all the way in and gets it. That's his second aggressive basket of this half. You know, but what he did that I was impressed with is Dean Garrett was standing there, braced to take a charge. Kip Jones, being a very good athlete, just glided a little bit to his right, knocked the shot down. That was a very good play. Purdue up by one. Edwards shooting high over Mitchell, no good. Jones with the rebound. Edwards wanted that shot after hitting two straight three-pointers. Yeah, he really did. He, he, what he wanted to do was to show everybody that he's a good offensive player. I think that was a shot that he would reconsider giving another thought. Good pass. Jones again knocked away, and it's a charge against Jones. I'll tell you, that's a big break for Indiana because Kip Jones was going to the basket. He looks like he has two points. Gets called for the charge. That's a four-point swing, basically. Right here, you see Kip Jones go. So charge was taken by Jay Edwards, and the foul was called on Kip Jones. Purdue has only missed three shots this half and owns a one-point lead after trailing by 15. 2.58 to go here at Assembly Hall. Back up in the Messi. 12, but now here in the second half with 2.58 to go, it's Purdue 76, Indiana 75. Both teams doing very well in the three-point range. Purdue has pulled its percentage almost up to 50%, and Indiana shooting better than 50% from the three-point range. 2.58 to go, four fouls on Kip Jones of Purdue, four fouls on Jadlow and Garrett of Indiana. Others have three, but we've only got 258 to go. Here's your shooting percentage, and it is. Look at the difference of Indiana between the first and the second half, Quinn. Yes, it is substantial. One of the things I think really has happened for Purdue is that they've come out in the second half with a real sense of purpose. They got a good understanding of what Indiana was trying to accomplish offensively and, and defensively. Purdue shut it off. And that is a bad foul by Troy Lewis coming up on the outside of. Edwards away from the ball, reaching in. Well, it, it really was a, a bad foul, but Troy Lewis is trying to guard a kid that really handles the ball extremely well. Troy didn't get his feet moving and got called for the foul. And that's only his first and the fifth team foul. Both teams have five team fouls. Obviously, neither one is in a one-on-one -on -one bonus situation yet. In the end, Indiana's got the ball down by one. And what Indiana has to do now is just, again, be patient, get the good shot, take whatever the defense gives them. For Purdue, they've been doing it all along. They've now in man-to-man, -man, but they're up the tempo just a bit. Jones passes Great off play. to Garrett. No good, and there's Kukowski. And I thought he was fouled several times, but nothing called. Possession goes to Purdue. 
I don't know if Indiana can really be so disappointed about that. They got their opportunities. They weren't able to capitalize on it. I thought Purdue did a good job of staying after the basketball. And here comes Purdue now with a chance for a bigger lead. Purdue showing patience on offense. Garrett, boy, with four personal fouls to reach in like that when he got the job done, and Indiana gets the ball back. Took the chance, and it paid off. And Garrett turns around, and no good, but his foul. Melvin McCants. And that'll be his fourth. Both big men. Both with four personal fouls. And this is the man, if he's not too tired, you do not want the foul. Meaning Dean Garrett, 10 in a row against Ohio State, two for two here. Dukowski goes out, Iowa comes in for Indiana. Melvin McCants is one of those kind of players that you may not see all the things he does on, on, the, on your stat sheet. He's been taking up a lot of space in there, causing a lot of problems for Indiana. And Purdue can ill afford to lose him as Indiana can ill afford to lose Dean Garrett. That's 12 in a row for Garrett, and it stops right there. 10 against Ohio State, two here today. And he converts. And it's a tie game with two minutes to go. 76 apiece. Well, this is where the fun starts. When the game gets close and you're playing on the opponent's court, this is where Purdue's got to like it. And Everett now has five three-pointers. Well, you see right there, that's a young man that's been in this situation. Likes it, took advantage of the situation. I thought it was a tough shot. He made it look easy and knocked a three-pointer right down. Hillman to Garrett, and he is fouled by Mitchell. And that is his fourth with 1.27 to go. Dean Garrett absolutely did the right thing in taking a basket to the ball. You see Joe Hillman coming to the basket. He gets help. I mean, Purdue helps out. And you see Dean Garrett try to stuff it. I, I might have called that a good block, to tell you the truth. I thought Todd did a good job of blocking that one. By my count, Garrett has a chance to get his 30th and 31st points here. Having a great game, his average is 14.3, and he's more than double that. And should he make this, it's a one-point game again. So Dean is doing exactly what he has to do on the Indiana side. He's a senior. He's out there. He's played the most minute. He's been taking charge. On the Purdue side, they have three people who've done a lot of that. Uh, Troy Lewis, Todd Mitchell, Everett Stevens. Looks like, in, uh, I'm sorry, Purdue has got the ball out. They're going into a semi-star. Going to get it down, use as much of the 45-second clock as they can. They're up 79-78. That's a pretty good strategy. Steven, whistle blows. Now on Jones. And they got out of that uh, strategy exactly what you'd like to get. You want to get two free throws or just an opportunity to get the ball in the basket. What you saw there was a veteran experience player, Everett Steven, take advan advantage of Lyndon Jones and go to the basket as a foul call. They're not in a penalty right now, though. The next one they are. Time called by Lewis. And that's Purdue a, takes time out. And, that, and that's a good call by Troy Lewis because he was about to get a five-second call. See, Purdue is leading by one point, 79-78. this year put it all together against Ohio State in Columbus on Wednesday night had a big lead in the first half and a 15-point lead at the half by as much as 10 of the second half before Purdue has caught them with veteran play but now the Boilermakers must inbound the ball keep the ball and try to score well that's that's always a little tougher than, than people think just trying to get the ball in, in bounds there but I think it's important you got a, a minute and three here to go Purdue is up one. All they got to do is come down, be patient, and take the best opportunity they can get. The ball is taken away by Edwards. They did not inbound the ball. Well, I, that's why I said that, because it's, it's a lot more difficult to get the ball in than you think. Jay Edwards also has some deceptively long arms, and I'm sure that came into play in trying to get the ball in against Purdue. I'm sorry, okay. Purdue getting the ball in against Indiana. Here's where Indiana must be patient and use a lot of the clock. Very tenacious Purdue defense. Man on man. looking for someone Lyle had broken for the basket then comes back out to take the pressure off 14 seconds on the shot clock 30 in the game 
Garrett. Loose for the moment. Five seconds to go. The better shoot. Goes to Garrett. Gets it up. Hey! Don't Mitchell is fouled. Fifteen seconds to go. Indiana had its chances. Garrett had to take a quick shot. Jones was there, and rather than bring it out, he tried to do it. Dean takes the shot, and I think McCants got in there, and you see Lyndon Jones get the ball. He's a little bit off balance. He shoots it, and Todd Lewis, Thompson, Todd Mitchell goes in there, fights for the rebound, comes up with it. Now he's at the free throw with a one-and-one. One. Mitchell going to the line, hit his first five, and missed. And what Indiana fans are hoping, of course, and Purdue fans are not, that he misses here. And with 15 seconds, only down by one, Indiana will have a chance. In the meantime... They're going to take a timeout. So the situation is Purdue up by one with 15 seconds to go. They've got the ball one and one at the foul line. And it'll be up to the veteran, the senior, Todd Mitchell. And lost by 11. Indiana went there and lost by 11. Purdue has a chance now to get out of here with its seventh consecutive Big Ten victory, virtually a lock on the title. And an all-time Purdue record of 17 consecutive wins. It is 79-78. Todd Mitchell's first has to go in, and there's not a soul on the floor of the Purdue black uniforms that has not come over and given a pat or a high five as he's about to step to the line. Bob Knight's group hopes that he doesn't make it. As we said, he hit his first five from the line, then missed the last time. This is one and one. This is an experienced senior who's been in this situation before, but he misses a crucial foul shot there, and Indiana's just going to push the ball up. A chance to win it for Indiana. Ten seconds to go. There's Garrett. He's going to take it. He's got it. Five seconds to go. The basket. 80 to 79. Time call. Four seconds to do. Well, right there, they, Indiana did what they had to do. You get the ball inside to your horse, if you will. Dean Garrett turned around, made a very good shot. Uh, Purdue has to come back. They got four seconds. They got a lot of time. Indiana stays patient. Get the ball inside to Dean Garrett. He shoots a turnaround. And then, as you see, it goes in. Indiana's up one point, 80 to 79. 31 points by Garrett. 31, including that one under pressure with five seconds to go. Now it's four, and Indiana leads 80 to 79. As Todd Mitchell on the line, one and one, couldn't convert. Indiana got the ball and did convert. Well, you know, Coach Katie had his shooter on the uh, foul line that you want. You want one of your experienced players who's been in those kind of situations there. Todd Mitchell just happened to miss that foul shot. Now, let's turn it around. Before we have Purdue maintaining the second ranking in the nation. Seventh Big Ten game. Purdue winning its 17th in a row. For that to happen now, they've got to do something with four seconds left. And when you have shooters from the outside by Lewis and Stevens, that kind of thing can happen easily. Yeah, it really can. We have a circumstance here. Purdue doesn't have any timeout, so if they can't get the ball in, that pretty much assures Indiana a victory, but of course, they got to get the ball in, too. So what they got to do is people say, get it in, get probably Troy Lewis on the outside, Todd Mitchell on the inside, get that inside-outside com combination going, whoever has the best opportunity to take the shot. A lot of things have happened, but in the last 30 seconds, Purdue has failed to inbound the ball. Indiana got it, and then failed to convert on the one and one. Well, you know, that you don't normally see that from the experienced team. The inbound, I think, hurt them more than the missed free throw. If they get that, that inbound pass in, they got an opportunity to go at the basket. Those, those are the kind of things that drive the coach crazy, not to be able to get the ball inbounds, and particularly in crucial situations. Well, with four seconds to go, there's little that Quinn and I can say, except let's watch. And time has been called again. That's one of those strategic calls right there. Now, Purdue didn't have the timeout, but what Bob Knight did was let, it, let Purdue come out, show a setup. They, now all the coaches will get over there, strategize, figure out what Purdue is trying to accomplish, and then Indiana developed this strategy to try to stop what Purdue is going to uh, try to do. Bobby Knight's team, led by 21, midway through the first half. By 50 to the half, Purdue came back, Purdue won ahead. After was tied at 69 all. And then came the moment we're talking about. Now Gene Cady 
as his veteran team. And remember, Jones a junior, Mitchell a senior, McCants a junior, Stevens a senior, Troy Lewis a senior. It is a talented and deep team. And this doesn't mean the season for Purdue. This just means a loss for Purdue if it happens. You see right there, J.R. was the J again, I, he's got long arms and he was able to get his hands on that basketball. And, and Purdue didn't get the ball in. I really think that that hurt him a lot. The thing that needs to be considered here is Purdue has got to not only get a shot up, but they got to have to get the ball the full length of the court. Because the bat ball is going to be taken out of the Indiana's basket. Ray Edwards, 16 points in the first half. Two three-pointers in the second half for 22 points. And it was the freshman Edwards that hoodwinked Lewis and intercept the inbound pass. What? I think that the, the ladies and gentlemen people at home are, are seeing a star in the making. Jay Edwards has tremendous talent. Uh, he played on, uh, as everybody in Indiana knows, a very good high school team. They won three consecutive state champions all along with Lyndon Jones. He was called but Mr. Basketball in Indiana. But I think he's got a great potential and the chance to be a star, not only in this league, but in the country. Remember when Michigan beat Indiana here last week, that was their first loss at home in 29 games. Now they're trying Indiana to start a new streak. Now remember, Indiana still has to get the ball in. That calls Purdue a problem. Indiana has to get the basketball in the bounce rate. But they're but two seconds away from ending the game. McCann throws the ball back and he just missed it. And there it is. Jones puts it in to seal the victory. The 16-game winning streak. Most likely the second ranking in the nation. The first loss in the Big Ten by Purdue. They came back. They took the lead. And then the veteran team could not inbound the ball. Todd Mitchell has been so good and has scored better than 20 points. Didn't hit the front of the one and one. And you've seen what happened. Indiana pulls the upset and beats Purdue by three with a gimme basket at the end. 82 to 79. Producer of today's game has been Steve Williams, directed by Ed Mathias, our technical director, Jerry Gerard. Jim Simpson and Quinn Buckner join us again Wednesday night when Iowa visits Michigan. That's where we'll be. Or perhaps you will see Wisconsin at Purdue at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 Central Time. Check your local listing for the game in your area. And once again, the final score. And the upset of the week so far, remembering that Illinois plays at Arizona later today, Indiana at home knocks off previously unbeaten in the Big Ten, Purdue, and has ended the 16-game winning streak at 16 and gives them their first loss in the Big Ten. Indiana at home winning by three. Big Ten basketball has been brought to you in part by the Elanco Products Company, who bring you Treflan and Sonalan for economical and dependable full-season weed control in soybeans. By Gillette Good News Plus, with the Luber Smooth Strip for extra comfort. By Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsors of the 1988 Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By AT&T, the right choice. This has been an RCM Sports Presentation.